Oh, hey there. You just caught me doing some cardio. Actually, no, you didn't. Uh, I don't do cardio for jiu-jitsu. You should just do jiu-jitsu if you want to get fitter at jiu-jitsu. But that'll be in a later video. Today, we're going to talk about belt progression. Belts, what does each one mean? How long does each one last for? Let's jump into it. Right, let's get down to it. Let's talk about this business. Belts, how long do they take? What do they mean? Do they mean anything? I don't know. I'm gonna try and talk about it for a bit here, but I don't know. Here's what I think. Uh, I've been in the game for 20 years now. I've got a jiu-jitsu black belt. It's actually not the one that I wear. This is the one I got given, but I never wore this one. I actually nowadays nearly never wear a belt. I only wear a belt to teach the kids classes. Um, I predominantly do no gi, and that's gonna be a bit of a, a fork in the road, isn't it? It's like, uh, maybe belts mean less in no gi than they do in the gi, I don't know. But let's talk about this roughly. You've come here because you wanna know about belts, or maybe you wanna know my idea on belts. This is not the idea. There, um, There is no real right or wrong, um, but what's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu white belt? What's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu blue, purple, brown, and black? So let's have a quick talk about it. Now, Obviously, everybody starts on white belt. That's the beginner rank. You don't require any. There's nothing you need to get into the game at that stage. As long as you're willing to rock up to a gym, show up, make the effort to get out of your car and go inside, you're going to get a white belt. Congratulations. Now, here's the thing with that. Um, most people start at white belt and maybe finish at white belt, unfortunately. They come in, they don't like it, they move on, they do a week or two, maybe they do a few months, they never go back. They get forced into a membership by their... Uh, pushy gym owners and next thing they've signed their life away and they've lost a, a year worth of wages for jiu-jitsu that they never used and that's unfortunate now the rest of us that stick around and keep going with it where do we go next from white belt we go to blue blue is that next step up above from white belt then we go to purple then we go to brown then we go to black so i'm going to show you what i think roughly the standard is for timings and then what could lead someone to go longer or shorter on that. So I've got my trusty whiteboard up behind me and uh, I've stolen this from a buddy of, well, I haven't stolen this whiteboard. I've stole the idea of a whiteboard from my buddy, James Smith. So thank you, James. Um, I think it works well for explaining things to people. Uh, excuse my shitty handwriting, but white belt, how long do people roughly stay on a white belt for? I would say anywhere from 12 to 18 months, maybe is a general. 12 to 18 months is probably like a general. Remember, these are very general. Some people are going longer, some people are going shorter. Most gyms probably in a year and a half are going to give someone a blue belt. They're going to rank them up to that next level. So I started out 2005. This is actually the white belt that I started with, this filthy, filthy, dirty, look at it. It's gross. And back then, this belt didn't even have a, it was just like an old karate belt. It didn't even have a bar like you see on the newer belts. And then I got some stripes on there. So some gyms do stripes, some gyms don't. Stripes are just another way to, you know, um, show incremental progression. Do I think stripes matter? No. Do I care about stripes? No. Do I use stripes with kids? Yes, I think with kids, they're a good idea. So white belt. We go to blue belt. Now, what's a blue belt? Well, the way I see it, a blue belt, from my point of view, a blue belt is somebody who is just out of that beginner stage. They're not an expert by any means but they're one step above a beginner. And, you know, if the way I see it, if they could go out on the street and they got into a fight with someone, could they handle themselves? Could they maybe hit a takedown? Could they maybe defend themselves? Yeah, hopefully. That's why I look at a blue belt. Now, how long do people stay on blue belt? Depends on a bunch of factors. Are they an active competitor? Are they some type of freak athlete? You know, are they a um, very fast learner? Are they someone who can compete, commit to large amounts of time and commit time to this endeavor you know are you a hobbyist who can get in one or two days a week that's all going to be things that are going to dictate how long you stay at that rank so 12 to 18 months on white belt up to blue belt then we go on to blue how long do people stay there i would say anywhere in the two-year range is probably a reasonable indicator so i would say anywhere between 24 months maybe maybe plus maybe 24 months plus probably somewhere in that range um, assuming you're you're an average individual. Remember, we're not going to choose the outliers here. There's the outliers that can spend six months on a belt that are crazy. They just go, they beat everyone. They're monsters. That's fine. But roughly, what are you looking at? Okay, blue belt. 
Next step after that is purple. Now purple's cool, I remember. So, blue belt. That was my blue belt. What I did, because I'm half autistic, what I did was I went out, I got given my blue my belts on the grading days, and then I would go out and buy this particular brand of belt that I liked, and it uh, had all my belts the same, the same uh, brand, so that was what I did. But you can see here, some stripes, blue belt. I had that thing for a couple of years. Right, so the next one, purple belt. Pretty cool color. And when you get a purple belt, you think you are the baddest. You are the baddest man around. You could fight any of the top MMA fighters and probably submit them because you think that they don't know anything and you're a jiu-jitsu purple belt. Jiu-jitsu purple belt's great. I'm not discrediting it. It's it's kind of like um, maybe a bit of a halfway point. You're, you're definitely out of the beginner stage. You're no longer a beginner. You're more than competent. You might even be able to tap higher belts right up until black belt. You know, you get a black belt come in, you're a bit of a hobbyist, you can probably tap him. If you're a really good purple belt, you can be a nightmare for people. Um, purple belt's about that middle zone. How long do we sit on purple belt for? Again, probably similar to that blue belt. Most people sit there anywhere from 24 months plus, but I'm going to say maybe 24 to 48 months. Because... People, it's a middle, it's that middle belt. People sometimes get bogged down there. They're like, you know, do I want to keep going? I've dedicated a few years to this sport already. Potentially at this stage, I'm probably at the, yeah, you spend a couple of years on purple belt. You're five, six years in the training. Most people don't stick with things for that much, you know, for that period of time. So purple belt can be a, a belt, unfortunately, where people stall a little bit. Um, I hate to see that because if you get to that point, it's like you, you really understand it now. You can leapfrog forward, but you just got to keep yourself motivated. Be in a good training room. Be with good coaching staff. Be with good training partners. Uh, you can do that. You can keep going. So purple belt, that middle belt, you feel like a monster. You feel like a bad motherfucker. Um, you are. You can probably beat up most people in the street if it came to it. If it, if it came to a wrestling situation, which most fights tend to do, but you're a purple belt. Now, next one, brown belt. Brown belt was cool. I, here's my brown belt. I liked my brown belt. I'm kind of fond of this belt. There was a lot of training, a lot of training done with this belt. It's a cool color. The way I see the brown belt is, you know, I think it's not shameful to be on a brown belt forever. Is there any, is there any issues with being a brown belt forever? Should, should everybody progress logically through these steps? And you might think, well, what's the point in having ranks if you're not going to always progress everyone through them. Well, we'll get to black belt in a sec, but here's what I want to say. Um, brown belt, something to be proud of, something to be massively proud of, huge achievement. You're, you're now a quite a competent grappler. You realistically, if you're at a gym where they're teaching everything, you've probably got a few takedown options that you can hit on most people. You've definitely got some A-game stuff that you can hit. You should have a fairly good understanding of a wide range of guards, wide range of passing. You should be able to escape all of the major pins, um, especially if it was a lower belt, it should be with relative ease. Brown belt is, is a very competent grappler, very competent. And most people, or most gyms, I would say, if you get to brown belt, they're going to punch you onto black belt at some stage. You hang around another, I want to say, 24 months, two years. So you know, the 24 months, maybe just out of that, maybe to 36. I reckon you stay around that sort of zone in most gyms. Around that two-year mark, they're going to start thinking, do I need to give him a black belt? And a lot of them just move you on a black belt and off you go and you do great and you get that next level. Um, brown belt should be a very competent grappler and it's nothing to be ashamed of. I don't think it's even be ashamed if you stay on brown belt either indefinite, indefinitely or for a long period of time. Have a think about that. I know that might be a bit of a salacious topic or a weird way to look at it, but I'm going to explain my thoughts on black belt a little more in a sec. So brown here. Okay, black belt. Well, I've got this black belt around my head here holding on my microphone, which I hope it's doing a good job of. What's a black belt? Well, I just gave out my first four black belts and they, uh, they were ranged in, in years from four years for one of the individuals, which is pretty insane. That's nearly unheard of. All the way up to about 15 years for one of the other gentlemen. Uh... What's the average time to black belt? Average time from beginning to end? 
I would say from time, so now now uh, on our whiteboard up here, guys, we're going from beginning to end time. I would say 10 years is probably a good average for most hobbyist people that make their way to black belt or most people that make their way to black belt. That's what I would say. Now, what's a black belt? Well, there is no standardization. There is no exact answer to that. Every gym, every coach, every association are going to have their own ideas. Some have a syllabus they want you to do and you have to move through certain progressions. Some of them will base heavily on your um, achievements in competition. Some of them will base on, are you just a nice guy and a good guy to have around the gym? There's a whole bunch of things. What do I personally think? I think it's a rank of mastery to some degree. That's the way I see it. A black belt should be very competent in all areas, standing, on the ground, top or bottom. He should be able to escape all pins. He should, obviously, you put him against another, you know, high-level black belt, it's going to be a battle. But this should be the general thing I'm looking for from a black belt. They shouldn't have too many glaring weaknesses. They're, they're still working on all parts of the game, just like I am. I'm always working on something new. I've had my black belt now for nine years. In December, it'll be nine years. Um, and you know what? I'm, I'm still improving parts of my game at all times, but I'm proud to stand behind my belt because of my competency, because of my ability. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what if you're older? What if you're just a hobbyist? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a great answer for that. This is what I was sort of alluding to at Brown Belt. Does everybody have to get a black belt? I don't think so. That sounds rough, right? There's a lot of people that might upset, and I'm not trying to upset people at all. Um, but I don't like this idea that it's kind of like participation awards at school, uh, kids sports now, where it's like you don't give the, the uh, man of the match to the best player. You just give it to as a round, you know, go through the team and give everyone, give everyone the award evenly. And what's the point in having ranks and awards if everybody's just going to get it anyway? It doesn't make sense to me. Now, you might say, well, we should look at people differently. If it's an older, if it's a 60 year old gentleman, does he get looked at? And yeah, I suppose there is considerations. Um, but I think as a general rule, you should look at competency. You should look at their skills. We should never negotiate on that. So if you want to go, okay, this guy's 60. He's obviously an older gentleman. His body's failing him to some degree. But does he deserve this belt? Well, he would have to meet all the criteria that you're after as, well, as a coach. Each coach has got a different criteria, and that's it's very subjective. And that's why you'll go to some gyms and you'll roll a black belt and, and you're a uh, blue or purple belt and you're young and athletic and you tap the black belt and you're like, what happened here? Um, they must all suck. Well, maybe they suck. Maybe that guy got a belt when he was an old, older guy. Maybe he's a hobbyist. I, I don't know. So there is no set. What I'm trying to get out of this video, I'm giving you a very rough formula here, but this is, this is all in a bit of a vacuum. But in reality, that's not how it operates. Everyone has their own variations of what they expect of their students. And each black belt that gives out a belt to someone else has to stand behind what they've given out. And that's the, that's the easy part for me. I've got to stand behind the ones I give out and so do other guys. And, um, you know, you can always work the rest out after that. Now, what happens once you get a black belt? There is degrees on black belts. So you'll see some people wearing their gi and they've got all these stripes on their black belt. What does that mean? Well, the first three dans or stripes, whatever you want to call them on a black belt, is um, every three years. Every three years at that rank, a new stripe or, or dan will be given. So... If I had, if I had this, this is not the one that I wear, but the one that I wear currently has three dens on here, or has two dens. The third one will go on in December, and it works like that. So that's nine years. Then after that, the next two stripes go out to five years. So five years to get another stripe on top of that to get the fourth stripe, fifth stripe, another five years, and then out of there it goes into um, uh, red black belts and and red white belts and red belts and crazy stuff. Um, that all gets a bit you know, convoluted from there, but that's just time. Basically after black belt, it's time at the rank. It's not subjective as far as does the coach think you're, it's just time. If you've been in the gym and particularly with the IBJJF side of things, if you've uh, been with the registration for three years, yep, you just get another Dan. So that's how it works. What do they mean after that? Not much. It's a bit of a show off thing. It's cool to have lots of stripes on your belt. Doesn't mean anything. No. Is there guys who are brown belts that might be able to teach you better than a guy who's got three stripes on his black belt? Yep. Um, and that's why from your point of view, take your time to learn, take your time to maybe go to some different gyms and see what quality training looks like or doesn't look like. Um, I think that's an important thing. So today's lesson was jujitsu belts. What are the ranks? What do they look like? What's a rough indicator on how long each one 
you will look, uh, how long would you be on each belt for? Hopefully you found it educating. If you want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments. See ya.